So today I wanted to do a short little episode on uh, 32-bit Amiga accelerators because I have kind of a few and I thought people might be interested in in seeing them um, and just kind of seeing the, the different variations of them. So let's start with this guy. This is what I consider probably the most common accelerator out there. This is an A3640 revision 3.1. Um, no RAM, but this uh, this would come with a lot of Amiga 4000s or Amiga 3000s even, and has a um, a 68040 at 25 megahertz, I believe. It may have come in a couple different variants. There's also an 030 variant of this, um, but, you know, I, I don't know how common that is. So let me show the next one here. This is a warp engine from Macro Systems. And this was another pretty common Amiga 4000 accelerator. Notice pretty much the same dimensions, right, to fit inside the Amiga 4000's case. Um, but this one has a, again, a 68040, but this one's at uh, 40 megahertz. And then this also has a SCSI component to it. So it has a 50 pin SCSI and the ability to add RAM. So these are both pretty common uh, Amiga 4000 accelerators. And um, like I say, this one came originally with the 4000 that I'm rebuilding from Software Hut. And then this 68040 came with the, the 4000T that I, brought, I bought from Software Hut. All these accelerators share the same, you know, bus connector and are pin compatible across all of the 32-bit big box Amigas, so 3000, 4000, and both the tower variants. However, not all of them fit. So this, this accelerator here, and I have to find the labels here, this is from Progressive Peripherals and Software Companies, PPNS. And I believe this is called the Mercury. And and this board is huge, right? Um, it is a very big boy, especially when you compare it to to these two. I mean, just look and see how much extra space this thing takes up when put side by side with the the A thirty six forty. Um. So this was a very early accelerator board, and it was meant for the Amiga 4000 or the Amiga 3000. Also works in the three in the 3000T, and is electrically compatible with the Amiga 4000. But kind of shimmy over here a bit to where the 4000 is. I move my camera here a little bit. You can see. <laughs> It literally does not fit in the 4000. Cannot cannot fit because of uh, because of where this is. Now um, the on the 3000, the boards actually went like this, you know, up and down, and there was there was space for this monster. Um, Easy has some slots for RAM, and I think it may even have had an optional. Um, SCSI component, but I don't know if that's actually true or not. Um, nice looking board. So let's shimmy back over here. Now most most boards came in this form factor because this this was kind of the most compatible. So if I take a look at this right here. I don't believe there's any labeling on this because this board is very dense and packed through. But 
hopefully that's legible there you can see this is from phase five this is the legendary maybe um, Cyberstorm Power PC so my variant has a uh, 68060 here and then a Power PC 604E here so this is probably one of the most powerful Amiga accelerators that you can get with some exceptions for the new like modern like BFG 4060 or things like that now this this one has two very interesting features first over here you can see we've got a wide SCSI bus very unusual most SCSI buses on Amiga's in fact I believe every SCSI bus except for this one uh, was 8 bits so this is this is uh, or 8 bits or narrow SCSI this is wide SCSI so it's a little faster uh, a little bit harder to find devices for then there's also a PCI interface here um, and this was used for a graphics card that I do not have maybe I'll get in future um, and also by the rare as G-Rex boards which unlike the mediator that I had they were boards that would plug right into this and provide additional PCI slots so this is a really rare really powerful kind of obsession level object for I think um, a lot of late 90s early 2000s Amiga owners um, I know I certainly lusted after one even though there wasn't that much software on it um, but now you can run Amigo S4 and this is what I'm putting in the the 4000 T rebuild so last <laughs> the last accelerator that I want to show here is this big boy and this is this is another one that uh, is not that kind of standard A3640 shape and this one just has A4000 T0604 Ref4 I don't think it has any other markings on it but this is a quick pack accelerator so this has a 68060 on it and uh, some RAM slots and it's a very unusual shape and the reason for this is that this kind of weaves between um, certain boards on an A4000T. So this was specifically made for the A4000T. There's an optional SCSI bit that I don't have. Um, and much like the, uh, the PPS Mercury, right, these are both really quite large. You know, they're, uh, although this one's not quite as large as this this big boy um, but it only really this this can only really fit in the Amiga 4000 T or the uh, uh, Amiga 3000 T maybe maybe the 3000 but these slots are probably too tall so um, anyhow those are the five that I have and Two of these are dedicated for systems, and then two I don't have systems for. Um, but this just goes to show kind of the variety of different accelerator boards that were produced for the Amiga. And um, uh, the two 68060s, the 4000T and the 4000, I've got systems for. The Progressive Peripherals one. I have a system for that I haven't shown on the channel yet, but it's my next restoration target. And then the other two I don't have systems for. Maybe need to correct that, expand my Amiga network a little bit. While we're talking about Amiga accelerators, we have to talk about stands. So stands are these little plastic pieces. And they're good ones and they're bad ones, depending on when you purchased and from whom you purchased your Amiga. Now the purpose of these stands is to support the other end of the board so that it's level when it's attached to your motherboard. And there are, again, multiple varieties out there. The ones that I have here are kind of the most common. Um, and they're good ones and they're bad ones. So the good ones are about 25 millimeters long. The bad ones are just a little bit longer. 
My understanding is that these were predominantly in Amiga Technologies machines, meaning those Amigas that were sold after Commodore went bankrupt. This particular stand came in my Amiga 4000T, and I had all kinds of trouble with that. I was constantly having to open up the case and reseat the accelerator, and it was all because of the wrong kinds of stands. What these oversized stands really do is they prevent the connector on the accelerator board from mating correctly with the corresponding connector on the on the motherboard. But anyhow, hope that was enjoyable. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.